In this video, we're going to take a look at how to apply the characteristics of the sampling distribution of the sample proportion. So to begin, we have the sample proportion that is defined as P bar, and this is the point estimator of the population proportion P. And P bar is obtained by taking X divided by N, where X is the number of elements in the sample that possess the characteristic of interest, and N is your sample size. So in this case, the sampling distribution of P bar is approximately normal for large samples, and a sample is considered large if the sample size N times P is at least 5, and at the same time, the sample size N multiplied by 1 minus p is also at least 5. So when both of these criteria are met, then your sample is large enough and p bar is approximately normally distributed. So then it follows that the mean of p bar is mu p bar, and this is equal to the population proportion p. And the standard deviation of p bar is defined as sigma p bar, which is the square root of p times 1 minus p over n. So in this case, we have that the distribution of our population is the binomial distribution where n is the sample size and p is the proportion from the population. So we find that the sample In this case, we have that the underlying distribution of our population is the binomial distribution with the parameters n, which is the sample size, and p, which is the proportion. So the population mean is found as n times p, since this is a binomial distribution. And the standard deviation, sigma x, is the square root of n times p times 1 minus p. So if our, large, if our samples are large enough, then the following criteria needs to be met. n times p should be at least 5, and n times 1 minus p should also be at least 5. Then we find that the sampling distribution of our sample proportion is approximately normally distributed, and the mean of p bar is going to be equal to the population proportion p, and the standard deviation of p bar is equal to the square root of p times 1 minus p over n. So p bar is approximately, which is the squiggly line with a dot at the top. So it's approximately normally distributed with a mean of mu p bar and a variance of sigma squared p bar. Now let's take a look at this example. The example says out of 2,500 students, 1,500 pass semester test one, calculate the probability that P bar, which is your sample proportion, is within plus or minus 0 0.05 of the population proportion, which is P, for N equals to 30. So our sample size is 30. So in this case, the first step will be to calculate our population proportion P, and this will be 1,500 divided by 2,500, and we get a value of 0 0.6. So the next step is to get our sampling distribution for P bar, and we need to check that N times P and N times 1 minus P are both at least 5, and in this case, we find that N times P is equal to 18, and n times 1 minus p is equal to 12. So we can conclude that the samples are large enough and therefore the sampling distribution of p bar is approximately normal and the expected value of p bar is equal to the p that we calculated at the top. So this is 0 0.6 and the standard deviation of p bar is the square root of p times 1 minus p divided by n so we plug in the value of P into the formula as well as the sample size N value, which is 30. And we find that our final value rounded off to three decimal places is 0 
So now we're interested in the probability that P bar is within plus or minus 0 0.05 of the population proportion. So this means that the population proportion, which is the mean, is 0 0.6, and that's right in the center. So if P bar is within plus or minus 0 0.05 of this value, then it will have, then the interval that we're considering will go from 0 0.55, which is 0 0.6 minus 0 0.05 up until 0 0.65 which is 0 0.6 plus 0 0.05 so our probability will be the probability that p bar is between 0 0.55 and 0 0.65 so in this case the area we're interested in is the area that is shaded between these two values on the graph. And keep in mind that we know that P bar is approximately normally distributed, and we found the mean is equal to P, which is 0 0.6, and the variance is 0 0.089 squared. So now we can continue by standardizing our random variable. So this is equal to the probability that P bar minus P divided by sigma P bar, which is going to be our standard random variable in the middle, is greater than 0 0.55 minus the mean, which is 0 0.6, divided by the standard deviation of P bar, which is 0 0.089. And for the upper value, it will be 0 0.65 minus 0 0.6, which is the mean of P bar, divided by the standard deviation of P bar, which is 0 0.089. So we find that this is approximately the probability of Z between minus 0 0.56 and positive 0 0.56. So we can write this as the probability of Z less than 0 0.56 minus the probability of Z less than minus 0 0.56. And we head to the tables to find our probabilities. So we take the difference between these two probabilities and we find our final answer is 0 0.4246. So now using Excel's norm.dist function, we can find the probability that P bar is between 0 0.55 and 0 0.65, keeping in mind that P bar is approximately normally distributed with a mean of 0 0.6, which is equal to the population proportion, and a variance of 0 0.089 squared. So we can rewrite this as it's equal to the probability of P bar less than 0 0.65, which is the larger proportion, minus P bar less than 0 0.55. So making use of the norm.dist function, this will be equal to norm.dist and in the brackets it will be 0 0.65 which is p bar comma 0 0.6 which is the mean of p bar comma 0 0.089 which is the standard deviation of p bar comma true since we want the area to the left of 0 0.65 minus norm.dist in brackets 0 0.55 which is the value of p bar comma 0 0.6 the mean comma 0 0.089, the standard deviation of P bar, comma true, which is the statement since we need the area to the left of 0 0.55. So the difference between these two will give us 0 0.4238, which is similar to the previous answer we've just calculated, but it's more accurate since we're making use of our Excel functions. So in general, when you make use of the norm.dis function, you'll find that the first entry is the value of P bar that you want to calculate the area to the left of. The second entry is the mean of P bar, which is the population proportion P. The third entry is the standard deviation of P bar. And the final entry will be the cumulative statement since we want the area to the left Therefore, our statement will be true. Now, suppose that 70% of the students passed the re-exam. A simple random sample of 40 students is drawn. Calculate the probability 
that more than three quarters pass the re-exam and three quarters here means 0 0.75 or 75 percent. So let's define x as the number of students who pass the re-exam. Then we find that x has a binomial distribution with a sample size of 40, which is n, and a proportion p of 0 0.7. And that comes from the statement that says 70% of the students passed the re-exam. So now we can define P bar as the proportion of students who passed the re-exam in the sample of size 40. So we find that if our samples are large enough, then P bar will have an approximate normal distribution with a mean of P and a variance of p times 1 minus p over n. So when we plug in the values from the information, we find that the mean is 0 0.7 and the variance will be 0 0.7 times 1 minus 0 0.7 divided by 40. And at the end, we find that this variance will be 0 0.072 squared. So we always need to check that the criteria is met. So if we do a quick check, we find that n times p is 28, which is definitely greater than or equals to 5. And n times 1 minus p is equal to 12, which is also greater than or equals to 5. So our criteria is met, and therefore p bar is going to follow an approximate normal distribution. And the parameters, the mean will be 0 0.7, and the variance will be 0 0.072 squared. So now to calculate our probability, it will be the probability that P bar is greater than 0 0.75. So we are going to standardize by taking away the mean, which is 0 0.7, and dividing by the standard deviation of 0 0.072. And this gives us the probability that Z is greater than 0 0.69. Now, since the table gives us probabilities to the left, then in order to get the probability to the right, we're going to get 1 minus the probability of Z less than 0 0.69. Now from the table, we find the probability is going to be 0 0.7549. That is the probability of Z less than 0 0.69. So our final answer will be 1 minus 0 0.7549. And this gives us 0 0.2451. Now we've been asked to calculate A such that the probability of P bar less than or equal to A is equal to 0 0.9. So in this case, they've given us the area to the left of A, but A is missing. Therefore, we can refer to A as the 90th percentile. To sketch our graph, we find that we have our value A of P bar, which is unknown. But we know that the mean of P bar is 0 0.7 and P bar has an approximate normal distribution. And in this question, they've given us the area to the left of A as 0 0.9. So we need to find the missing value of A. So the first step is to head to the tables. And we find that from the table, we need to get our Z value. And our Z value is defined as P bar minus P divided by sigma p bar. So we need to look for the probability or the area 0 0.9 such that we can get the corresponding z value. So unfortunately in the table, we don't have a position, an exact position of 0 0.9. So what we do is we find the closest values and the closest value is 0 0.8997 and 0. 9015. So if we want to get a better approximation for which of these two is close to 0 0.9, then we take the difference. So the difference between 0 0.9 and 0 0.8997 is 0 0.0003. And the difference between 0 0.9015 and 0 0.9 is 0 0.0015. So the closer of the two values is going to be 0 0.8997. So the Z value is going to be 1.28. So now we find that we resubstitute our values into the Z score formula, and we find 
that 1.28 is equal to A minus 0 0.7 divided by 0 0.072. And when we work our way backwards, we find that A is equal to 0 0.792. So if we make use of our Excel functions, we're going to use the norm.in function. So A is equal to norm.in. And we have the area to the left of A, which is 0 0.9, comma 0 0.7, which is the mean of P bar or the mean of the value missing. Then we have 0 0.072, which is the standard deviation of P bar. And this is equal to 0 0.792. So in general, when we make use of our norm.in function, we find that the first entry is the area to the left, which is the probability that has been given. Then the second entry is P, which is the proportion, which is equal to the mean of P bar. And the final entry is sigma P bar, which is the standard deviation of P bar. Now, given sigma P bar is equal to 0 0.0115, what is the probability that the sampling error of P bar is less than 0 0.01? So the sampling error is the absolute difference between P bar minus P. And in this case, we want the probability that it's going to be less than 0 0.01. So we're going to make use of this second formula here of the absolute relationships. So this is equal to the probability that P bar minus P is between minus 0 0.01 and 0 0.01. Now we're going to standardize our random variable P bar by dividing with the standard deviation since the mean has already been subtracted. So this is going to give us the probability that Z is between minus 0 0.87 and positive 0 0.87. And we can rewrite it as the probability of Z less than 0 0.87 minus the probability of Z less than minus 0 0.87. So when we go to the table and read off our two probabilities, we find that this will be equal to 0 0.8078 minus 0 0.1922. And this gives us our final answer of 0 0.3844. Given that sigma p bar is equal to 0 0.0115, what is the probability that the sampling error of p bar is greater than 0 0.01? So the first thing we need to keep in mind is that the sampling error of p bar is defined as the absolute difference between p bar and p. And in this case, we want to find the probability that this absolute difference is going to be greater than 0 0.01. So using our absolute relationships, this is equal to the probability that P bar minus P is greater than 0 0.1 plus the probability that P bar minus P is less than minus 0 0.1. So if we take a look at our graph, we find that we are interested in the area to the left of minus 0 0.01 and the area to the right of positive 0 0.01. So because of the property of symmetry, this is equal to twice the probability of P bar minus P being less than minus 0 0.01. So by standardizing, we find that we're going to simply divide both sides by the standard deviation since the mean has already been subtracted. So this will be equal to two times the probability of our Z value less than minus 0 0.87. And from the table, the probability of Z less than 0 0.87 is 0 0.1922. So two times 0 0.1922 gives us our final answer of 0 0.3844. So this concludes our chapter on sampling distributions.